The consul general I am going to visit loves Chinese very much and has a special feelings towards Beijing, the dual Olympic city. His Mr. Martinos Mandelidis, consul general of Greece in Guangzhou. During his 15-year diplomatic career, Mr. Martinos Mandelidis has devoted most of his time to promoting exchanges between China and Greece. He officially took up the post of Consul General of Greece in Guangzhou in November 2021. He and his wife are sports enthusiasts. In their spare time, they ride bicycle to admire the architecture in Guangzhou. They are also fan of the arts. They like attending art exhibitions and strive for understanding further traditional and modern Chinese art and culture. Today, I'll invite them to view lotus flowers and feel the vitality of midsummer. Hello, Martin. Hello, Vivian. Nice to see you. How are you? This is my wife, Mar. Wow. Very nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet you too. How elegant she is, just like the graceful lotus flowers here. Thank you very much. I feel uh, very lucky, man. The lotus flowers are in full bloom, very beautiful. Yeah. They survive in the most severe weather in one year. Today is the greater heat uh, we call Da Shu. Uh, it's the hottest time of the year, so you could feel wow, it's very scorching today. And it's also the best season to appreciate the beautiful lotus flowers. So that's why I've invited you here. Yeah, we could smell the, the fragrance of the lotus flower when we enter the park. Yes, the, the vitality and the life force of the lotus flowers in full bloom really embodies the life force and beauty of nature during the greater heat. Yeah, I think so. So, as it's the hottest time of the year, and actually I have prepared some special dessert and tea for you. Would you like to try? Sure. Excellent. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so this way, please. Apart from appreciating the beauty of the lotus flowers, the greater heat is also a season to eat lotus. We have a Chinese saying, Shun shi er shi, which means we eat different food according to different seasons. So that's why I've prepared lotus tea and lotus seeds for you. I hope you will like it. Would you like to have a try? Sure, yes. You can see the fresh lotus flower. Thank you. Mm. Do you like it's it? It's very tasty. Uh -huh. It leaves a lasting aroma of lotus in my mouth. Since I came to Guangdong, I've heard that different parts of the lotus flower are edible, like the seeds or the roots, but this is the first time I taste this. Actually, all parts of the lotus are edible and they are very valuable. And the lotus actually have been regarded as precious and nourishing food since ancient times. So now actually we could enjoy the lotus tea for relieving the summer heat. And at the same time, we could also try some lotus seeds for nourishment. Mm. Would you like to have a try? Yeah, it's delicious. Hope you like it because we spent a few hours making oh, this. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, it looks very delicate. It really reminds me of souvlaki in Greece. Yeah, yeah it's true. Souvlaki, but oh, we put meat. What, what is that? It's like, it looks similar, but it's made of meat. Uh, mm -hmm. So that I would say is like a sweet uh, variation of souvlaki. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you feel about it? It's very good, very sweet. I yeah. like it. Tasty. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful and fresh. It's yeah, very, it's very refreshing. Yeah, I think um, both the lotus tea and lotus seeds are delicious and healthy for summer. No, but in summer people tend to live, uh, tend to feel a bit tired. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think you know, having this lotus food and also enjoying the view of uh, the lotus flowers feels very soothing and refreshing. You know what? What lily and lotus flowers are different in Chinese. Oh, what's the difference? In English, they are both translated as lotus. Yeah, as we saw just now, actually, um, the water lily were floating on the surface of water, while the lotus flowers were actually standing out above the water. 
they seemed that they were competing with each other to be growing higher, faster, and stronger. Wow, that's nice. So they look like they are competing with each other. Yeah, just like the athlete. That's a very interesting way to put it, actually. It, in ancient Greece, the Olympic Games was developed as a competition between non-professional athletes. Mm -hmm. And they would test their limits, they would reach excellence through competing with each other. What the winners received was not material benefit, but they received an olive wreath, which symbolized recognition and had great moral value. What was most important was participation making your best effort. Physical sports and education was part of the education of youngsters in ancient Greece, and that's why many philosophers, like Socrates, spent a lot of time in gymnasia and wrestling halls. And I know that also Confucius was a master of sports. Yes, uh, I think Confucius was a master of archery, and he thought that a good archer needed not only good skills, but also morality, self-cultivation, and aggressive spirit. And as far as I know, in the Zhou Dynasty in China, um, which was about 3,000 years ago, students were required to learn six arts, which included rise, music, archery, chariot racing, calligraphy, and mathematics, to promote all-around development and to achieve a sense of dignity and harmony. In ancient Greece, wisdom was equally important as physical education and physical strength. That's why many philosophers, like including Socrates, they used to spend time in the gymnasia, meeting their pupils and also giving lectures. Are you serious? How could he do the workout and at the same time give the lectures? How could he do that? Well, I mean, you know, um, as, as I said, you know, it's a balance between the two, wisdom and physical education. And uh, actually in Greek, the term philosoph philosophy means comes from philos, which means love, and sophia, which means wisdom. So philosophy means the love for wisdom. So philosophers always strive to for more knowledge and more wisdom. Wow, I think that's beautiful. I think love, knowledge, and also health and sympathy are the most important things in life. We're very grateful about the wisdom passed on to us by our ancestors. And actually wisdom you can also find when it comes to eating. As you said in solar terms, uh, seasonal eating is also one of the philosophies of the Medi Mediterranean diet, which is mostly based in the consumption of olive oil, seasonal legumes, vegetables, fish and fruit. So, this is one of the philosophies as well in this uh, kind of cuisine. Well, I think uh, after trying this very beautiful delicacy of the great heat, I would like to introduce you also some summer food. We've made an appointment with a special Greek place if you want to go there to taste it. Sure, so shall we go now? Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Let's go. This place is beautiful. I want to introduce you Dimitris. He's uh, the only Greek restaurant in Guangzhou, at Last Delhi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Wow, I really want to try this dish. So what's the name for it? This is called Yemista. Yemista means like stuffed vegetables. It's a very typical Greek summer dish. Can I Can you help, me? help you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay. It's like a jewelry box for ladies, made by vegetables. What is this? This is rice with many herbs inside. Uh, like onions? All the first herbs of the garden. Oh. So what's your first impression of this dish? Oh, it was amazing because it's, uh, it looks simple, but actually it's quite difficult to make. And it's also a seasonal dish because tomatoes are in the best at their best in summer so with a taste of tomatoes and the stuffed inside it's it's delicious okay so i think it's done yeah, yeah. you can take a rest when the plate food is ready okay and i call you back in the an hour maybe okay you're so kind to us so uh shall we take a rest now yes. <laughs> 
I was wondering, how do you two know each other? Well, I'm from Athens, uh, Greece, and uh, Marsh is uh, Spanish. And uh, we met in Beijing, actually. Wow. Yeah, we met in Beijing. Uh, at that time, I was working, I'm an architect, and I was working in an architectural company in Beijing. And Martin was working at the Embassy of Greece in, in Beijing. So that's how we met. And every time I mention that we met in Beijing, everyone is very surprised that I met my Greek husband in China. Yeah, maybe you are doomed to be together in Beijing. <laughs> yes, probably. <laughs> and actually for me, Greece is a special country for me because I spent my honeymoon there. Oh. The scenery there was so impressive. I think the most impressive thing happened in Greece that people were very kind to Chinese tourists. I remember I first learned the word Mama May Breakfast. Have you ever heard of this word? Mamma Mia Breakfast. Mamma Mia Breakfast. Yeah, I first learned Mamma Mia Breakfast in Greece. The owner of our homestay uh, in Mykonos Island, um, he prepared Mamma Mia Breakfast every morning. And even though the set of breakfast actually was very simple, but you could feel his mother made this set of breakfast with her heart and soul because everything is so fresh, like um, the jam, his mother made herself and yeah, the apricot jam. And I could find many big fruit apricot in the jam. And the bread is fresh and made. And also the juice is very fresh. The fruit is very fresh. So I think um, the people in Greece wanted to show their hospitality to the Chinese tourists. Greece is also an ideal place for honeymooners. Yeah, so speaking of the honeymoon, I know you met each other in Beijing, so do you go to Beijing nowadays? Well, we have been a couple of times to Beijing after me, we moved out, mm -hmm. but uh, I also know that Beijing holds a very special place for the Chinese people, mm -hmm. and this year the Winter Olympics and Paralympics were held in Beijing, mm -hmm. and that made Beijing the first and only dual Olympic city. Yeah. And Greece, as a custodian of the Olympic spirit, was very mm -hmm. honored and very proud to be able to do again the Olympic flame ceremony in ancient Olympia and deliver the Olympic torch to the Beijing organizing committee for a second time in the last uh, 14 years. Wow. I'm proud to hear that and I watch the Beijing Olympic Games almost every day. I think China actually have showed our determination and perseverance to hold Beijing Winter Olympics and Paralympics. Persistence, perseverance, overcoming adversity, these are feelings that are no stranger to us. And I think that the marathon as a game, as a sport, really embodies these aspects, these three elements. And uh, this has to do perhaps with the origins also of the marathon. The marathon is related to the famous race of a legendary Athenian soldier who raced without stop from the town of the ancient town of Marathon to Athens. And he ran to Athens to announce then to the Athenian assembly of citizens uh, the victory of the Greek army over the, over the Persians. And famously, after announcing the good news to the Athenian uh, assembly, then he collapsed and passed away on the spot. So this is an incident that is also commemorated every year in the classical marathons that takes place between the modern town of Marathon and Athens downtown. An event that attracts a lot of international participants as well. I think it was an inspiring story. Oh, I think the dish is ready. Oh, wow. Hello again, it's great. Hi, Let me see whether I could get the same authentic taste like it was in Greece. I'm sure it would feel the same for you. Really? For me, the smell brings back a lot of memories. It reminds me a bit of my childhood. I could smell the memory too, 10 years ago. Yes. The full memory 10 years ago in Greece. 
I remember in summer, mm -hmm. after going to, to swim in the sea, mm -hmm. going back home and, you know, as I entered the home, this mm -hmm. is the smell that greeted me. And uh, as I said, it's a dish cooked uh, by my mother, also cooked by my grandmother and to share for all the, the family. Oh, shall we try? Yeah, let me try sure. it. Wow, mm -hmm. the same taste as Delicious. it was in Greece. The same, mm -hmm. totally the same. So he's very professional though. Yeah. And it's a very good dish to have during the greater heat. Yeah, because it's sour and the taste is very light. Very little salt. I think no salt, right? No salt, very no little salt. salt. No very salt, no salt. Or just a very little salt. Yeah, it's quite yeah, healthy in summer. Yeah, and yeah. I also reminds me because everything here is so fresh yeah. it's a seasonal food, food. yeah, yeah exactly. seasonal food seasonal vegetables so you have summer vegetables like tomato and peppers to, to enjoy this food mm, it's so appetizing i think it's really good to have it after working out and tell us William, uh, vivian what is your favorite sport what sports do you normally do well, I like running. Actually, I have participated in marathon in Guangzhou, and I think the running process actually was tiring. But after you finish the full distance, and I think you found the scenery at the end uh, would be extremely beautiful. I think this process could help you to break the boundaries yourself, and you began to understand the meaning of persistence. So, by the way, have you um, participated in the marathon before? Well, not yet. Uh, we haven't participated in the marathon, but uh, speaking of persistence, we have been studying Chinese for quite some time now, and crossing the finishing line really feels like running a marathon. Okay, so maybe let me see whether you're really crossing the finish line in Chinese. <laughs> so, can we start a um, uh, mini marathon in Chinese with you? Okay, <laughs> let's give it a try. Why not? Okay, so I will have three questions in Chinese. Could you help me to translate these sentences into Chinese? Okay, give it a try. Okay, get ready to it. The first sentence is the yamster is very delicious. Uh, and you, you know it. Oh yes, yeah. of course you know it. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I will give you I think this is a little bit simple and I will upgrade the difficulty a little bit. The weather is very hot. Wow, bravo! Okay, you got a pun. Third question. Uh, because today is greater heat. So, what's the Chinese version of greater heat? Da shu. Da shu. Excellent. <laughs> oh, you, you are, both of you are very good in Chinese. Yeah, I think it's, it's close to 100 points. We try our best, but still a lot to learn. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. speaking of persistence, uh, mm -hmm. I want to say that recently I went to the Guangdong University of Foreign Studies mm -hmm. uh, to the Greek department to celebrate uh, the World Language of uh, the World Day of Greek Language, mm -hmm. and there I, I saw also and sympathized with the uh, new students, Chinese mm -hmm. students that were trying to learn Greek, and I think this is a very durable bridge and promising bridge between our two countries. I heard that this year is China, Greece, culture and tourism year. Could you explain more about it? Precisely. Mm -hmm. Last year we inaugurated the China, Greece year of culture and tourism, mm -hmm. which was expanded also into 2022 due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And at the inauguration ceremony, we unveiled also a statue in the ancient Agora below the Parthenon of the Acropolis, uh, showing Socrates and Confucius, two great thinkers that lived almost at the same time at the two edges of the known world. And I wonder, because this year marks the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between China and Greece, so what other prospects for the cooperation in the future? Greece and China, they're both at the opposite ends of the Maritime Silk Road, but they're also integral parts of it. China is the biggest exporter and importer, mm -hmm. while uh, Greek-owned Maritime Commercial Fleet is the largest in the world. 
So, and it's very important here to note that a big part, a big number of the Greek-owned ships are being built here in China. So there is a very strong bond between our two countries when it comes to the maritime field. We also want to bring together the very dynamic innovation system, innovation ecosystem in Greece that is now being developed and bring it closer to the important innovation centers here in the greater Bay Area. And of course, last but not least, tourism. We are really, we are very eager to welcome once again Chinese tourists in Greece as soon as the travel restrictions are lifted. I have seen the most beautiful sunset in my life in Greece, in St. Helena. The sea is very blue, but the sky is very pink. Very beautiful picture in my heart, and I think I will remember this picture for the rest of my life. And at that time, I was thinking, I will be back one time. Well, I will share a secret with you. Uh -huh. uh, you're not the only one who has this honeymoon in something. Also, our honeymoon, we spent it there. Wow! <laughs> so there is something in common between us. The long history and rich culture of China and Greece are shining like stars in the summer night. From the beautiful lotus flowers in full bloom under the high temperature and humidity environment during the greater heat, to the Chinese and Greek philosophical wisdom of Confucius and Socrates, the connection between the first dual Olympic city and the Olympic Games in ancient Greece, and Mr. and Mrs. Consul General's persistence in learning Chinese. All these stories unfolded in this summer and caused us to think deeply. The two countries have gone through the arduous process of cultural rejuvenation. Upholding the attitude of perseverance and courage, we believe that the harder the times are, the more determined we should be to reach our goals. Only through vigorous and determined endeavor can we fulfill our responsibility to history and prove worthy of our times.